something happening already? Okay, you just, uh, you yes. just click the button. Yes. yes. Sure. Let me uh, change the present mode. Oh, see. Even the slide look different now. <laughs> um, I changed quite a lot since the last time we did. So play around and then do Google slide and then do slide.com, but eventually still come back to PowerPoint. Um, yeah, seems like it's still the best choice. So once again, thanks uh, Wen and the organizer for the uh, event today. I'm um, going to talk about Angular Directive. I highlight and underscore the more for a reason for sure. And then, yeah, let's get started then. I play around with it, you know, talk a little bit, but eventually I still need to put a bit of slime on myself. That's not something I tend to do a lot, but basically yeah, I did a bit of um, open source work in Angular. Um, not like contributing directly to the Angular source code, but I was building some project with, with Angular and you can see it on GitHub. Um, still there's a, on the left there's Jira clone, there's on the right there's a Spotify, some of my mode, uh, popular project. And then uh, I do Angular Singapore and Angular Vietnam. Now we only has an in-person meetup, so I never really had a chance to invite Gwen to, to be our, one of our speaker. But maybe in the future we might you know, considering doing online talk. And after a while doing Angular stuff, I got a GD in, in Angular last year. After some time, yeah. Gwen get it quite early, but I uh, only submitted it uh, a bit later. So that's Singapore, you've never been. I was not originally from Singapore. I, I stay here for a long time. Um, that's uh, you can see that there's some kind of you know Instagramable English photo on the screen. So if you never come and visit Singapore, feel free to come. Welcome. Um, a bit further away, as we just saw, um, the fly was could be yeah maybe a day for you guys. But <laughs> you have a chance to visit Singapore. Let me know. And at the moment, um, with Ascenda, we um, simplify loyalty for bank um, partner and global merchant around the world. So, talking about Angular directive, but first we are going to look into the just you know basic about Angular component and what it look like. So. That's look very obvious. You know, yes, uh, a component as the most basic building block of an Angular app. That's uh, I think it's just, uh, just started long time ago. Not just before, like not when Angular was introducing, right? but I think it started when Angular JS was there, and then there's other kind of UI framework like Backbone and all. And the concept of the idea of component was like to make the code you know maintainable or not maintainable exactly but it's more like organized and um reusable if you can and in in an angular application it just contains a tree of component i don't have the example for you but you can think about a, a simple web application could have the root and then so many like header and then content and inside there could be so many things a list an user even the button could be a component. So we look into it in a short while. Um, we look into one of the example, uh, I think I just mentioned about a button, which most of the application needed anyway. So we have the code, and we just look very overwhelming, but because we are sharing the screen. So I think it's easier to graph what is going on. Um, so this is a simple, button or like custom component. Um, you can see that you have the selector. That's the first thing. It's going to call share button. And next to the selector, we get the template. And the template is very simple. You, you know, there's a custom button. You wrap the button, native one inside, and then you pass in the text and the theme here, you can see. It's just, you know, an, kind of an input. The theme could be a primary, secondary, outline, uh, you name it. It's not something you need to worry about too much. And you know, there's just a bunch of input that kind of makes sense 
like how you can pass it in and then how we can use it. For example, here we have button tag. And yeah, that's the last thing. That's a TypeScript class. So component that's basically three things. Select the, the template. There's a class linked to, to that kind of um, component. So when we look into the first example, it's very simple. It's just, you know, a button with a text. And based on the example we have just now, I hope you still remember the code, but think about there's only one input, for example, like button text, and you give me the text. So here it just say login. Go back to the code one more time. Hope it's not overwhelming. So it's just the selector, and then you have a button text here. And then that's the way you render it right there. Okay, three things. There's a selector, there's a button text, and you render it. So the first example seems to be easy to understand. And when you look into the DOM structure, that's how it looks like. There is share button. Okay? So Angular is going to create a proper kind of, you know, a DOM node, and it's calling this share button. That's the selector we have. And then we got the button inside. Pretty simple. And then there's a login text which is wrapped inside span. So far so good? Okay, I think it says a yes. Next one, you need the button with a bit more sophisticated. So here you have a, an icon. So there's a text and then the icon. Because the icon could be anything, right? It could be uh, an eye tag. It could be just a HTML SVG. So we want to look into it from a different angle. So the same code base, but now we change it a little bit. Still see, there's still share button. The tag is still there, okay? That's still the text. But now we got something more. We got the something I call it just you know, the template reference, which means that you can pass just arbitrary, you know, HTML. And if you're familiar with React, you're not familiar with Angular, so it's like a children in, in React. But here, instead of using something like ng you know, content, I'll just you uh, just take it as a prop, like an input, and then render it. But it's not just render using you know this thing, this interpolation. We need to use template outlet. Um, this you know, we are gonna talk more next week. I think my talk for next week is, is also already accepted, so yeah gonna talk more about ng template next week but the idea here is like this template reference is reference to a piece of html and you can pass it in the component so it's not just a simple string anymore it, it's a proper you know html could be anything could be a div with something inside so just pause it so that you can grab the code but next slide you see how it's you no. So as you can see here, we got, first of all, we define a template, the template called Twitter button template, and it is rough using ng template. Okay, so it's inside this template, it can be anything. It's just HTML. And then you can use the new input, we call it button content. And then you pass in this template. So the whole thing here, the whole thing, it is exactly that, that template. This, you cannot just set it as a string because you know, when you render it as a string, it will just basically the whole text. It will not interpret that Twitter icon as an Angular component. So that's why we need template reference and ng template outlet. I'll wait one more time so you see the code. Okay, so it's template reference and then template outlet. So far, so good, I think, if there's no question. Then, on the DOM, we can see that there's a share button. There's still a button, I think. Yeah, for sure. But then the, the, the one that you see here inside the span is the completely new, you know, the structure that we send in. That's a proper HTML, and it's including another Angular component. Twitter icon is another component. And the last example is gonna be like, okay, that's look like a button, but it's gonna behave like a link. So there's different way to tackle it, but you know, in a lot of use cases, 
what we tend to do is that we wrapping the logic inside the same component. And then to make it happen with, you know, the, an A tag, it is going to be long, I'm just saying. So as you can see here, the code, you know, it doesn't make sense to show you the whole code. But basically, you can think of, it's like we are uh, encapsulate all of the logic to render the button and an A tag inside the same component. Think of it this way. So that is easier. Um, and uh, I think the difference here is like, okay, so the code, the underlying code is like, okay, if you see that there is a redirect URL, then you are gonna render the link, for example, because you know, the button, we don't do anything with the link at all. So if you see that there's a redirect URL, then you do render the, the A tag. And then the template is the same. The template is the same thing, like the button container we was introducing just now. It's just now for the link, you know, we have two more property, redirect URL and is target blank. And then, you know, in the A tag, if you remember, target blank true is mean like that's target the, the, you know, the A and then target equal to underscore blank. So it's a target, but then we call it differently. We just passing a boolean, and then next one is the hedge wrap, right? We don't call it hedge wrap here because you know maybe the developer should want to say, okay, I want it to be very explicit. We don't call it hedge wrap. So as you can see, that's the kind of previous original button, and then we got a new, a few additional property. And you know it's kind of supporting the ACE tech. But then you know instead of just calling something is is like disable, you know something you're familiar or href, then likely you are just gonna name it with a different name. This the name here is not making it up. I'm just taking from a, a real example, but it it happened before, so that's why I know. Right, so you might not necessarily name thing to something that you're familiar. You could want to make it a bit more explicit, for example. So that just suddenly feel like, okay, if someone is not familiar with a component, then maybe he need to go inside and examine and understand the code and then to see what property he need to put in. And then, after all, let's say you kind of familiar with the code, you know how to use it, you know when you need to use, you know, you want an A tag, you pass in different thing. So that's how it look like. Okay, still there's share button, wrapping the whole thing, and then we passing redirect UI here, as you can see, and then inside, now we had an A tag. So it's not a button anymore. So from the logic of the code, you can think about yeah, there's a you know, if something, then we render the A tag. If not something, we render the button. For example, um, I didn't show the code because it's very long. <laughs> so, when you have this kind of use case, you know, there's a different way to think about it. Let's say there's someone doesn't know about that our share button here can render an A tag, you know, can render a link then how he gonna do? So, you know, very natural that I just have an A tag outside and then I run the whole button inside. So, you know, you run the button inside the A tag and then when you click, it still, it still function as what you want. It still open a new link. But I think that is the second component you can see here. Need to focus, like, need to pay a bit more attention because here we have an A tag and inside there's a share button. So as you can think of, right, there's an A tag, share button, and then another button inside. So that's why when you pay a bit more attention, you can see that the first tab, the outline is a bit dark. The second tab is still in the same element, but it's a bit lighter. So the first, you know, first step is just focusing on the A, and then the second is gonna focusing on the share button. Think about this one. So that is, you know, as someone who use keyboard, 
a lot of time during the day, that's obviously not a good experience. Right? You you just don't want it to happen. But in the project, there might be some mistake like that, and you just you know maybe they just don't don't know. Um, it's not as fault because you know not everyone can go in and then read the code and see what it's is doing. So the summary was like okay you know as we can see creating a custom button that we're trying to do a few things at the same time doesn't scale very well why when you look into the button itself right that's just that's you know it's not just having a few property you know, there's a tie for sure you know there's a classes there's a i don't know um tie classes auto focus and you can see here there's a few Right, but then it's every single HTML element is always come with something we call it global attribute. And a global attribute could be you know, something like that. Like an area attribute that you might need to set it on the button. And this list is long. So I just let this, let this scrolling happening for a few seconds so that you can see that is the list is really long right it's just it's just long and you might not necessarily need to support all of the attribute but when you think about you wrapping the button inside of a custom component if you need to support one attribute here then what you want to do you gonna introduce a few more input as we see before you know, we, before we have disable as a boolean, then here you need to yes uh, input disable, and if you need to add an area hidden, then okay you need to put an input, and then you you need to repeat it for so many if you need to support all of them, um, and you know it's just not applicable for only button. There could be that like an input or like take area or the table. So think about this way that you know, just more thing you need to do even though those kind of attribute is you know supported by the browser by default so hope you kind of see some of the issue that we have with the custom component approach when we try to build a custom button and um, there is a better way to do it in angular and we call it augmenting native elements if you are familiar with you know material or ng Joro, you might know about this approach so first of all augment augment is not something we use in daily in english and i'm also not a native english speaker <laughs> um, english is my second language for sure and then uh, augment is something i don't know but then the meaning is like to you know increase the size of value of something by adding something it sounds very abstract i know but that's a that's a definition of augment and um, the idea in angular was like okay there's so many things going on there's so many cat meme but the idea was like okay we need to use something we call attribute selector so that we can extend the native button element instead of creating a custom component for the button so it yeah doesn't really make a lot of sense now because you don't see the code but hopefully it's going to be clear in the next slide so once again a lot of code this uh, presentation sorry that's just so many code to show but if yeah i don't show the code and it's a bit difficult to explain so the selector as you can see here is a bit different how is different because now you say the selector here is always has a button or the A. And then this square bracket that you can see is meaning, okay, if I see the button that has an attribute called share button, it is gonna mesh. And then it's applying something. You don't really need to know what is this something. But for now, the template is very simple. It's just an edgy content. So technically, if you see a button and whatever is inside the button, it just tag it and the ng content here is kind of understand that whatever e inside this button 
is this ng content you you see it in the next slide don't worry i know that's uh, you know it never worked with ng content before it's, it's just so sound so abstract and then i think that's that's the two important point yeah i think that's it so the selector here is different it's using attribute selector and then the template is very simple just anti content and it's going to make sense in the in a short moment but everything we do here was like in the end you know you want to set the different classes to the button itself so that you know it always has a button to reset some of the styling and then btn primary and btn hyphen secondary for example and then it just apply it into the button itself so look into it in, in a short moment but that's all it do now so how it is possible because that is the whole list of directive selector i just take from the angular documentation so you can do it by element name that's what we do before share button you can target it using a class we don't really do it we can select using attribute name and something something that's small and that's what we do we use this attribute name right so eh? okay there's something is missing but here we are just scoping it into only the button and only the a because you only want this kind of behavior applying on the button and the link you don't want it to apply on the div for example okay the div can look like a button but it doesn't exactly the same button right like all of the keyboard interaction doesn't work and um you know it, it's just not really accessible so that's why we scope it into two things a button and a link okay so now finally we can kind of see an example how it's used and then I hope now it's, it makes sense. So you can see here, that's the selector that we was using. So you can see there's a button and then there's a share button next to it. So suddenly, you know, this is mesh. It's just met to this selector. That's the first thing. So there's some, you know, behavior that we are going to add into it from the classes. And here I just put in two random class, but it's not the point. The point of these two class is not very important. And then, you know, because it's a, just a normal button, then I put the tag inside. So it's, it's very normal, nothing very special. And here we are using something we call, you know, an input and then another input to pass the class. So here the approach below just suddenly feel a bit a lot more natural not just a bit it's, it feels a lot more natural you're familiar with a button rather than you're familiar with this share button and the only thing you need to take note here is like you need to you know add in an attribute share button so that it kind of mess the selector and then the login inside it is the ng content that we see before so it's just like anything inside you know in between the, the the tag, the HTML tag, it is understand that ng content. Um, we will see a, a bit more sophisticated like why do we need this ng content? Because you know, you take just anything inside, then yeah, that's it. That that's 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 kind of working. But you see one example just in a little bit. So that is first example, okay? The the button with only the text. So we see the before we see the second button, you can see that now on the second approach, yeah, we only has a button, a button, a button. And then, okay, that is a class that I pass in, but then there is a class here, button and BTN secondary. That is a behavior of the component that we, you know, telling it to do. And then it's just, you know, render the button. So I just go back one more time so that you, you remember so here we had any content which means anything in between the button we have a selector which is you know it need to have button or, or a and then it need the share button attribute 
And then what we apply here is very simple. We just, you know, apply classes into the hall itself. So that's why you see that there's a button class and then the button secondary class. Also, the additional class that we pass in, right? It's not overriding. It just keep adding into the classes. Okay, okay, I hope it's clear. So here then, once again, that's how we use it. And that's how we can see there is a button in BTN secondary. And then there's login and the content. So second one, second one may be a bit easier. So on the second one, again, you know, the old approach, we pass in two input and we have it template and, and the new one, you just passing the template as just you know something inside the button, just the content of the button itself. And the class the same, but you use just the normal classes. Right? And then here, once again, there's a button and share button. Then yeah, the inside is edit content. And then the DOM structure. It's button, button. And then the one inside is ng content. And once again, we still have the classes. You know, it's appending into the list. Ah, okay, now I have some highlight thing. Um, last one. So because you know we have two selector. So here we use share button in an A tag. And as you can see from the, the top example, the old approach, we just you know send in a couple of input. And some of the name is different from the A, the link itself. So here, like for example, the redirect URL. Okay, let's say the, the blank first, the target first. So here's e target blank true, like a boolean. But now in, in the below, you can just use target equal to blank. That's the A native um, attribute. And then for redirect URL above, below is just here, right? Is this what you're familiar with? And yeah, I think that's it. So here you can see that you are using the A, and here you just see, oh, I'm using an abstract, you know, share button that do everything that render the A. Um, it's not explicitly saying that this is is gonna render you a link. It still feel like a button. Um, so we can look into the next slide on the DOM. So on the DOM now, it's, it's very simple. It's still an A, okay? That's an A tag. Um, there is the button classes, you know? That's, that's what make the button look like a button. So that's what we, that, that's all we need actually. And everything else the same, right? That's a hit drive. We can use it as normal. And then there's a blank target. And then there's a rail now open, even though we don't really do anything with the rail now open. So that is something we look into next. Okay, as yeah, you can see here, we don't have the rail now open. Back one more time. Let's see, there's a rail now open. Why? Soon, you know. And then it's rendered as normal. So the benefit, I hope, so you kind of understand the idea. The so benefit is the API now we win when we interact with the component is a lot more simple, a more a lot more familiar. And accessibility, you know, we we not get into the use case where you wrap an A and inside an A there's a button. And then the implementation seems to be a lot more sim simple. Let me see, I have a code here. I think the idea here is like I had a code to show you. So let, let me see. Probably I still have a code. So I didn't really prepare for it. Um, didn't really prepare to open this editor before. But as you can see, we have button dot ts. Uh, okay, so there's something wrong. But yeah, uh, it's it's not a point. The point is <laughs> the point is that that's you know that's how the button implementation look like. Just want to check you guys still can see the screen when 
Is it okay? All good? Yes. Okay, okay. So yeah, so that is a existing implementation. That's the, you know, whatever button it is. And it is long, right? There's a button mode. It's checked for if there's a redirect UIL. <clears throat> then if not UIL, then it's a, you know, button. If it is an UIL, then it's a, it could be an internal or it could be external. And then it's rather a different thing. It's rather a different, you know, this could be a button, it could be an A, or it could be another A. So it's here, it's the difference is that, okay, is, is, can it be a, a router link, or is it going to be a, a head rack? <laughs> yeah, you don't need to understand all of it, but, you know, the idea here was like, okay, that's old implementation, it's just so long. And the second version, this is, yeah, I mean, of course, I'm trying to simplify things because, you know, all of the additional prop or input, we don't need, all of this we don't really need. We only need the theme and that's it. All of the, you know, button tie and then redirect URL, we can depend on the native um, attribute. So the second implementation look a lot smaller, 20, 25 lab code. And it's just basically setting a class and the existing implementation. It's also trying to set the class, but it's also trying to, you know, sending a bit more input and did a bit more check so that, you know, it's differentiate is a button or the link. So, yeah, I prefer the second one a lot shorter. And um, let's get back to the slide. So, in the end, one takeaway here is utilizing the attribute selector when you build component, especially for something like button. And you know, there's something, some example I'm gonna share. So first of all, the, the button is easiest to kind of look into because that's the familiar one. And then if you're familiar with material button, then that's, that's what they do as well. They do the same thing, okay. Button, mat button, and then button, mass ray button. Um, and um, yeah, the code you can look into here. I, I will you know, share the link so that you can look into the code, but the idea is very simple. They use the same thing so that you can still use a button. And then this component doesn't have to do all of the additional input to just support the native component itself. NG draw do the same thing, okay? So button and NG button and A NG button. So it's very similar to what we look into. And if you remember just now we have this ng content. And then you know the beauty of this is that you can add more thing into right. So think about there's a button here. There's a button. Okay. Just forgive my drawing. And then inside here, that's a that could be, you know something more so let's say here between the button even though you don't supplying uh, you know a, a template for an icon when you send in a boolean name loading then it's still showing the icon the spinner and then the text still next to it so it's very powerful right you can kind of extend the template it's not just limited in this ng content at all it could be a bit more extensible so that's ng draw oh yeah i think that's what i try to highlight but then what else button is uh, very classic you can only do a button or what so button a then now you have table and you can see here there's a table and then there's a math table as well next to it so if you see that the table has an attribute of math table it's gonna do something for you. Simple as like that. And yeah, navbar also using the same idea. So you can see you uh, a nav, and then you you know pass in this thing, and yeah, it's kind of work. Um. So the question here, like, uh, should we never replace the native 
component with a custom component. So the custom component is like the share button. The uh, custom one that we've seen. And I think the answer is yes, of course, we need a custom component for sure. Like, you know, there's a lot of things, it's very complicated. Um, data time picture, so complicated. Uh, some kind of custom input, so complicated. Um, so for sure, we need a custom component. But in Angular, when you are trying to create a new component, then maybe you know, there could be a way to enhance it a bit to augment the existing native element that we are trying to you know, implement. Maybe an input could be a good example. Maybe an, a button in this case is a good example. So if you can augment, then for sure, try to do it. If not, then yeah, you have to use a custom component. That's, yeah, that's kind of end the first one. So we go into the next one, the power of Angular selector. I hope it's still kind of you know, easy to follow. It's just some new code I just show you. The second one, I think there's even like a bit more of the code you need to read. <laughs> but okay, so the idea here, like you see, there's two things. There's the you know, two link. And the difference here is like, okay, it has a rail, no open. And you know, when you have a target blank, that's recommended to put this rail. I know that, you know, a lot of browser now, they already up, upgrade. You know, if you on the latest version of browser, you don't have to worry about this at all. But still, a lot of users are still running on old browser, so you need to put it when you're setting your target blank. And it's considered safe, right? So, I think we mentioned before, but just now when I use the A and then I use the share button here, let me see, you know, we don't, we don't say, okay, I want the rail anywhere else. Uh, you see, there's a target, there's a theme, there's a share button, and then there's a head ref. We don't say that I want this rail at all. You know, I don't, you know, you, you can see from here, there's no appearance of rail equal to no open. So where does it come from? That's an interesting question. But then, you know, to add in the rail, we can go with the very naive, naive approach where you add a new directive and then you put it into here. You just say, okay, ng set link, and then you just buy the rail into no open. And then find out. And you go there. Why do I want to do it? Because I can always just, you know, type in. I just, I can just, you know, copy this rail equal to no open into the link. I think the benefit from doing this, you know, directive is like, okay, maybe you get a, get a suggestion. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice thing to have. Why not? Right. You get a suggestion on VS Code and it's simply so you type it, it suggests for you. But it's uh, yeah, it's like we try to custom something. But there is a better way. So here you can see you add in something, then you have it. But the next part was like, okay, maybe there's a better way so, so you can have it somehow, even. This approach, the directive, or the previous one is like, oh, I add the rail, so I had this rail. But there's something we call auto opt in. <laughs> so a bit more interesting here, right? We still using the same directive, but we don't just select it, you know, using something custom anymore. So here you just select thing using like CLS selector. If you work with jQuery before, it's look very familiar. So it's like you say, okay, I want to select all of the link that has target blank, but it doesn't have the rail open, no open, right? So it just explicitly say, okay, that's what I want. So if I forget to put a no rail open into the blank, then it kind of meshed this selector. Or you can say, okay, 
I want to say I want the A that doesn't have router link, which means it has a href, which means it's likely it's going to be an external URL because it's, it's going to open in some different, you know, start with HTML. It's not starting with slash something inside our application. And then if it doesn't have the not round no open, then it's going to match. And then here, it just apply the hot body. Right, so this is kind of what we call auto opt in. So you import this directive, then any A tag in your template that doesn't have a no rail open when there's target blank, it just apply it automatically. And I mean it automatically. You might think about it. It's south a bit more simple now, like. But then you've seen it before somehow. Probably you've seen it before. Um, okay, then I, I forgot that. Okay, so that's the that's the idea. So you need to import it so that when you use the ailing like that, and then it kind of match so there's a target. But it doesn't have the it 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 doesn't have that, so that it mesh, you know, it's not having a realm no open. So it just apply this for you. This rail no open. And yeah, that's not what you see. But we have been seeing it for forever, right? You, when you work with form, like template driven form, you always need to import the form module. And then when you import the form module, for some reason, you know, this form, this HTML form, it just suddenly, it has this, you know, oh, and the submit. So it's not a natural, it's not like something HTML supported by default, right? It's an endless thing. But you do only one thing, you only import the form module into the module. Okay, form module into module, it doesn't really make sense, but yeah, it's just, it's just import it. And then you have this ng submit event, for example, or you can use this, you know, hash assigning to ng form, and then you can get the value below. You can see, you use a you know, hash and f equal to ng form, and it need to be exactly ng form. It cannot be anything else. It cannot be ng form two. Cannot be chung. Cannot be when. Cannot be Kenya. It need to be ng form, and then it you you kind of get the instance of the class ng form itself. So where does it come from? It doesn't really automatically come from you know from the, from the sky. Yeah? So, Angular, right, you can see, okay, is it, okay, here, see, first of all, in the ng form module, the form module is a template. First of all, we have this ng form is a directive, and the selector look like that. The selector say, okay, if the form doesn't have the ng no form, or it doesn't have form group, so form group is a like reactive form, so we don't care about that. And then if you explicitly explicitly say, oh, I, I don't want Angular form, I want just a normal HTML form. So you can do ng no form. So you say, if it's just a form that doesn't have these two things, then yeah, we apply something. Or you has this, you know, ng form explicitly apply, or you have you using ng form as the, you know, an ng form, right? Like that. Like you use it this way ng form right instead of the just the normal form um so when it match this right for the form that we see before it's just the form doesn't have anything so that's why it kind of match the the selector and then in this in this form code it just has so many things okay so it said you know also there's ng submit which is an event emitter so because it's matching, so now suddenly that's why you can use ng submit here because it's you know it's a event emitter, it's an output, um, and there's a lot more to it. You know when you can access to this ng form, and okay, that's the export as ng form as well. So I think this export as ng form is important. That's where you can do this. You know. Has f equal to any form. 
So it need to match exactly with the export as here. But I get, I hope you get the idea. The idea is that you don't just, you know, you uh, a custom selector. You can, you know, generalize the selector itself so that it can match what you want. And maybe you enhance the behavior. So, you know, the, the attribute thing where you see before like ng safe or, you know, whatever, color focus, you see it a lot online, but it's not the only way to select. And it's not the only way to write your directive. And you can see here in Angular, you can use this selector, very generic, and we've been using it for a long time. So there's, you know, also the, the example of the, the A-Link without a proper um, rail. But yeah, I think there's a lot more example, but it's just one important is like, you can generalize the selector so that it could match and enhance the behavior. So the takeaway from today is gonna be, okay, the first thing, you can try to augment the native element you, you can, and when you can do it, it's gonna reduce you know, the complexity of the implementation and provide a familiar API. Um, in short, the one you need to remember, you, need, you should using the left side, if you can, the right side, we should, should use it when we have you know, absolutely no choice. But the left side seems to be a very good example of implementing a button. And then the second one is more like, when you think about the Angular selector, you can think about it as like a CLS selector. It could be very sophisticated, like this where A, which has the target blank, but doesn't have something. Or what we saw before, the form, which doesn't have this attribute on that attribute, and then it's gonna apply an additional kind of functionality. So that is the two takeaway for today. And uh, yeah, I think uh, that's all. Thanks for staying. Um, that is the link you can download the slide and some of the code that I, I link into. So that's a QR code, feel free. Any, you can use the link, you can queue QR code. Um, and yeah, I mean, okay. So there's so many things in this slide, not just this two, but that's how we say thank you in Vietnamese. Okay. That's, cảm ơn bạn. Cảm ơn rất nhiều. that's how we say thank you in like Singapore. We have four different languages, so it's like terima kasih. Um, that's Malay. Then that is like Nandri. It's Nandri. It's like in uh, I forgot Tamil. And that's Sisha. It's like Mandarin. And then yeah, in the end, that's thank you. We also have English. So that's uh, a few. <laughs> way to say thank you here in this slide and yeah once again that's the link to the slide if you have any question feel free um there's uh, also some link that you can check out so yeah thank you for listening i hope this was interesting thank you thank you very much Trun. uh i think that was an amazing session uh personally i usually like learn a lot whenever you have a session and uh, it's always great to see how you know you can break down the bits and pieces uh, and angular stuff. It's really great. You always provide that with really good uh, you know, explanations and also the same kind of support driven story. All right. Um, I'd like to open the floor to any questions. If you have any questions, please feel free to raise your hand and then because we can just like uh, call you and then you can unmute yourself and ask the question. This this is your opportunity, so please uh, take this as an opportunity to ask. Yes, any question? Any question? Any. <laughs> How to be GD? Can you can ask when? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, just a comment from me. Um, every, uh, hi, hi, Trung. every time yes. I hope I'm pronouncing 
taking your name well <laughs> um so every time every time you do a session with us i often learn a lot and most of the things you honestly introduce um they are quite new they are the, just oh. things you haven't explored yet so i have to say that um 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 it it also um challenges me to sort of like learn more about angular and sort of like you know you are you are your engineer goals <laughs> thank you thank you joyce <laughs> yeah so um thank you and we hope to see you in kenya pretty soon um in kenya we say thank you by saying asante sana i mean in swahili it's asante sana asante yes asante. So, yeah, it's not quite easy. Asante Salah. Yes. Okay. I'll edit it into the slide next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Okay. Anyone else yeah. have a question, maybe, or a comment? Let me just share the screen again. So that's the link just now. So let's see. In case you, you are you're not yet had a question, then the below right that's a that's a link to the source code that i show on on the ui just now um let's see form okay that's angular form it's just go direct to angular yeah package directive and form and you can you can read a bit more code here so but you know in the end what is important to you know get away with is also like yeah Angular code is just you know another code that you can read and then it's open source. So there's certain thing that you've been using for a longest time and you might you know questioning yourself like how is it you know, like how is it work under the hood and all of this thing then yeah feel free. Um, the code is there and basically for ng form this this thing it just has the underlying form group anyway right. So or suddenly things feel a lot more familiar. Right? You, if you work with reactive form oh actually it's just a form group. But it just abstract the thing for you so that you can use it easier. So yeah, that's the idea. That's the end of some features now. That's event emitter we just seen. And a lot more, a lot more. So when you read this kind of code, it suddenly feel like there's certain thing you've been reading, you've been kind of you know thinking about, and then suddenly it's, it makes sense. So yeah, <laughs> I I learned from it also. Even though I haven't done Angular for, for quite some time. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, maybe just a question, right? Um, so, what advantages do you think one can have? You know, just taking some time and you know looking at something like forms, like what happens under the hood. What advantages do you think uh, people would have on that? Advantages is more like yeah. Usually, it just bring you a bit more confident. Yeah, I, I understand the source code of a library. Ah, you know, it's not a lot of people go down that path and try to read the, the source code. But I think the 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 more other benefit was that you can see that the way they write code, right? Yeah, you know, they are Google engineer. They write code, and it's it's you can maybe you learn something from it. I think that's that that's good because even the way they write, a, a, you know. Uh, command or the description so that make things clear for other people to use. It is good, and not just you know you need to go through every single file. Right? It's just too much. You just first of all you choose what you want to do or you go into the pull request, um, and then you can see the way. Not just the code. So now you can see the way they are talking to each other. I think yeah you know, the way. The Angular team was giving feedback on, you know, okay, maybe that part we need to do something else. That part I want to do this way. It just look, you know, you 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 learn from it. I think you know, the way, and you want my in in the future you want to imitate or apply it in your workplaces. So here you can learn from the expert right, without really paying anything, and they are really the expert. They are really a world class like software engineer and then they write code and it's just the code that they're writing was you know mean for a lot of people so the way they write documentation the way the way like description for the pr sound 
quite detailed. It's pretty um, um, you know, comprehensive, easy to understand. So yeah, I think that's that kind of the, the, the biggest benefit. You can you learn something from looking into um, the the source code and and the way people interacting on open source. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, I, I think that's uh, I think that's some something that maybe some of us you know may overlook uh, because we're always just waiting on. What is the next new feature in Angular 17 and Angular 18? What's upcoming for Angular 17.1? Uh, but yeah, it's it, it's good that you mentioned that you know it's always great to just look at the PR, you know, just look at how people are communicating, you know, and maybe this could be some of the things that you know you could also you know implement at your workplace, like uh, you know making sure that you have a clear PR that talks about, uh, I mean, like provides a description of what this PR is all about and how people can converse in terms of making sure that, that PR is, you know, on point before it's even moved to another stage. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and just one thing to also note, um, if you if you look at also the PR, you can see that it has like flags or uh, I, don't, I don't know, like fields or something like that. We usually call them yeah. flags, like, you know, it tells you like what exactly this PR is going to touch on, you know, and all that. And that, I think that is really good engineering understand um, what a particular PR is going to touch before you even go ahead, you know, and start having those conversations. So that whenever you have it over there, uh, the next developer or maybe the CTO knows that, hey, you're actually going to touch, for example, the core or you're going to touch maybe the back end, you know, and all that. So mm -hmm. it's really great to have those kind of flags. But yeah. It does, uh, yeah, it's a uh... Yeah, usually it's, it's, a, it's a label you can add any you know many yeah. you want to see it it could be like yeah. 100 here <laughs> yeah thank you thank you for that anyone else who has a question maybe my comments just feel free to raise your hand and ask ask any questions please Oh, actually, I, I think I have one PR open. Let me see, let me see, let me see. interesting. Uh, because I was not sure about when, but I, I was adding myself into uh, uh, the uh, the Angular IO as the uh, contribution. Uh, but I, I don't think it's yet much yet. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't see I don't know my name. It's, it's still in the, it's still oh, it's in the waiting area. Oh, okay, oh. it's closed. Oh, I didn't know about that. Oh, it's already much uh, two weeks ago. Okay, okay. Wow, there's so many faces here. What? Oh. Nice. Let me see. Let me see, Mr. Wayne. Wait, wait. Where do you see it again? I forgot. Like, ah. Committee? No. Somewhere. I yeah, I mean I'm very bad and I contribute. Okay, let's contribute. Uh oh. No? It's gone. When? Do you remember? That's... I can't remember where exactly this happened. <laughs> Not if it's in the community section or what? Yeah, I I also forgot like it, the link was a bit hidden. Right. Yeah. So you know it's it's not very important to be there, but you know, they said you should just create a PR. Then I like, create a PR. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. So. Okay. Um, if there's no question, um, I'd like to say a big thank you to Trung for taking the time and uh, you know taking us through Angular directives. And I think it's uh, I personally I've worked with directives. Um, <clears throat> On different occasions, uh, but like getting to see like what really happens under the hood you know, and all that gives you like a clearer picture. Of, like okay, so this is how how much you can stretch it. So it's really great to have that kind of perspective as well. So yes, I think each and every one of us now here has got done something new. If you can go test it out on your personal projects before you even go out there and working on it, um, your company projects so that you don't break anything. 
uh, just to make sure that we master that craft before putting it out there. Uh, but thank you, Trung. I know that sure. next week we are with you again um, <laughs> on another session. And yes. uh, we're definitely looking forward to it as well. Okay, sure. Thanks, Gwen. Thank you, yeah. everyone, for attending. And then, uh, yeah, see you next week then. <laughs> All right. See you, see you guys. Cheers. Bye.